Okay, geometry. We're going to focus on area again. So I just titled it 11.3 and 11.4. We're going to do area of multiple shapes. So we'll get to those in just a second. And so we've already covered area of parallelograms, triangles, trapezoids, rhombi, and kites. So now we're going to look at um, we're going to look at circles and sectors and regular polygons and composites. So let's get to it. Okay, as I entered area equals pi r squared, it would not recognize it properly, so I'm just going to leave it handwritten. So the area to a circle is pi r squared, and so on our example to the right, we've got a circle, but we don't have a radius. Okay, We have um, a circle with a diameter of 14.75. So the first thing we're going to need to do is convert our diameter into a radius, and so we're going to take 14.75, and we're going to divide that by 2. And that gives us a radius of 7.375. Okay. So we're going to take that radius and we're going to square it. And then we're going to multiply it times pi, which is 3.14. And so that gives us a total of... Um, Area equals 170.786, and I'm going to go ahead and say that, round that to the nearest tenth, so that's going to give me an area of, oh, I shouldn't write it that way, area of approximately 170.8. pretty basic on the circle and so now we're going to take it to the next level and we're going to find the area of a sector okay so now <clears throat> excuse me let's take a look at the sector sector is kind of just what it sounds like it's a section of a circle and so we've got a little oh if you look at this like a pizza we've got a little pie missing a little slice there that's got a radius of four and that's an angle of 53 degrees. In our equation, area is x over 360 times, times pi r squared. And the x represents the angle. Okay, so the x is the angle. So let's go ahead and substitute in. We're going to get area equals 53 over 360. That's the amount of degrees it's taking up times pi times the radius squared. So we've got area equals 53 over 360 times, we've got uh, 16 pi there, so I'm going to take 16 times 3.14. That's going to give me 50.24. I'm going to go ahead and make this a fraction, make it over 1. And so I'm going to take that 50.24 times 53, and then I'm going to take that number and divide it by 360. And that gives me an area of 7.396. So if I round to the nearest tenth, I've done that again. I need to do approximately 7.4 and we go back and we notice that's in feet so that is feet squared or square feet depending on how you read it okay so the only variance is is maybe they uh, maybe they want you to find the shaded piece or maybe they want you to find the outside piece, um, which would be the larger one. So we would just take 360 minus 53 in that case to find the bigger angle. But um, we can we can make that happen. Okay, so that's circles and sectors. That pretty much covers 11-3. Now we're going to move on to regular polygons and composites. Okay, so this starts 11-4. We're going to start with regular polygons. This is a five-sided regular shape. And by regular, it means that 
all five of the sides are equal. Obviously, this is a pentagon. And so our area is one half of lowercase a, and lowercase a stands for apothem. And in this case, the uppercase P is going to stand for the perimeter. Okay, apothem is the distance from the center. Okay, drawn perpendicularly, it's almost an altitude, but it's not the altitude of um, <clears throat> of our pentagon. It is the perpendicular distance from the center to one of the sides. Okay, so that is the apothem. So let's take this and let's say we have, um, well, let's get a good example of this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You've already got there, so obviously please don't erase yours. Just to give me a little bit more room. So if this is a regular pentagon, any angle drawn from the center and drawn to the outside is a central angle. Because it's drawn to one of the sides, that means it is one-fifth of the entire interior angle sum. Now, because the interior angles all add up to be 360, what we're going to do first is we're going to take 360 and we're going to divide it by 5. And that's going to equal, I'm going to go ahead and label this. I'm going to call this A, B, C, and D. So angle A, B, C is whatever 360 divided by 5 is. And in this case, that comes out to be 72 degrees. So angle ABC is 72. Okay, so if we're going to find area, we need to find uh, the apothem, and then we're going to need to find the perimeter. So I need to think to myself over here, I need to find the apothem, and then I need to find out what, um, what AC is, or if I can find DC and double it, that'll give me AC. Okay, so we're going to use a lot of stuff that we've already used before. Because ABC is 72, the apothem bisects that angle, so that makes this angle 36. So knowing what we know in some of our earlier chapters, we can use the sine we can use the sine to find out what DC is. So sine of 36, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to make DC our opposite, which is X, over our hypotenuse of our right triangle, which is 10. And so I get my trusty little calculator here and I do the sine of 36 and I'm going to cross multiply because that's a proportion so take that times 10 and then I'm going to that's going to come out X is going to be approximately 5.877 we're going to go to the nearest tenth so that's 5.9 so because that's 5.9, that makes AC 2 times 5.9, which is going to be 11.8. Okay. So now that I know that's 5.9, I can find my apothem. by using a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, so that's going to be, we'll just let our apothem be a. So that's going to be a squared plus 5.9 squared equals 10 squared. Okay, so let me break out the calculator again. 
5.9 squared so that's going to be a squared plus 34.81 equals 100 so now I'm going to take 100 minus 34.81 and so now I take the square root of that and that's approximately rounded to the nearest tenth 8.1 okay so my apothem is 8.1 So, let's put it all together. Area is one half of my apothem, which I found out to be 8.1, times my perimeter, which we haven't technically found yet. We know that AC is 11.8. We know this is a regular pentagon. So I'm going to multiply that times 5. So my perimeter is 59. So I'm going to take 59 times 8.1, and then I'm going to divide that by 2. That gives me an area of, I keep doing this, of approximately, I apologize for that, guys, of approximately, when rounded, that's going to be 238, well, it's 238.95, so that's approximately 239. And that's going to be square inches. 239 square inches. There it is. Okay, so last one. We've taken a little bit of time. Let's get to composites. Okay, so composites are going to take every shape we've done so far and put them all together in different designs. So here we have a semicircle, we have a triangle, and we have a rectangle. Obviously, the easiest one to find right now would be the rectangle. And so, um, and I'm going to just draw the little shapes over here. Okay, maybe I should draw it vertical like it is. The rectangle is going to be 7 times 4. So that gives me... 28 square feet. That's not a very good F. Okay, so that's pretty simple. So now we can draw the semicircle. I think that's the, the next easiest one. Semicircle has been given us a radius of 4, and so we need to realize that our area for a circle is pi r squared. But since it's a semicircle, we're going to divide that by 2. So that's going to be um, 16 pi divided by 2, which will be 8 pi. So I'm going to take 8 times 3.14. And that gives me approximately 25. There's an approximately 25.1 square feet. So now I have two pieces done. So now I need to look at the little triangle. Okay, so in the triangle, we need to find the third side because we have a base of 4. We need to find out what the height is. So that's going to be x squared plus 4 squared equals 5.7 squared so that's x squared plus 16 equals just off the top of my head I don't know what 5.7 squared is that's 32.49 we're going to subtract 16 from that so that gives us x squared equals 16.49 Take the square root of that, and x is approximately 4.1. So now I have a base and a height, so I'm going to take 4.1 times 4, 
and then I'm going to divide that by 2 because it's 1 half of base times height. So that gives me the area in this case is approximately 8.1. So now I take all three of those. I've got 8.1 plus 25.1 plus 28, and that gives me an area of approximately 61.2 square feet. Okay, that should take care of the area of circles, sectors, regular polygons, and composites, about 16 minutes.